Hello and welcome back to a new tutorial for Unreal Engine for you. So this tutorial actually it's a mixture between Matinee and Morphs. Probably the majority of people know how to use Matinee and the majority of people also know how to use Morph targets to make some animations or probably some people counting on sending those uh, Morph targets already animated in the FBX file so they don't have to uh, change or manipulate the Morph targets or it's blend shapes. So as you can see here, I have in Maya, I have this sphere, spherical shape as my main mesh, and I have two blend shapes. Or if you are using Max, you probably more familiar with the term uh, morph targets. So I have these two uh, blend shapes, and it doesn't matter have how, how you connect these blend shapes uh, within Maya. It's not our topic right now. But anyways, if I move the slider. It takes this shape. If I move the other slider, it takes the other shape, and I have named those P sphere two and P sphere three. Or basically, this is the name I have when I export it, when I duplicate it. Sorry. So now I'm doing export, and when I export, I have to make sure that I have the blend shapes in the deformed mode, uh, in the deformed models. So I have to make sure this is selected because otherwise I will not have it comes in Unreal. And this is uh, a typical third person project, nothing fancy happens here, I hit play, the character run, I didn't add anything. So I'll come here and let's add a folder and call it uh, meshes. And within this folder I'll exp I will import a new file, which is basically the file we already created in Maya, the FPX. And here, make sure to mark the skeletal mesh, because without skeletal you will not be able to import morph targets. Now, I have imported morph targets, and if I open the skeleton mesh that I already imported, I'll find the two targets, just save. Yeah, so I have here the P-Sphere 3 and P-Sphere 2, which is basically here, and they are have sliders as well. Sliders looks different, but they do the same thing. And even more, you have here, you can take the, the value for negative, so to have the opposite effect, anyways. But yeah, this is the two sliders here. So... <coughs> Sorry. So here I need to add a matinee to be able to control this. But in order to have this, we need to have animation blueprint first. So I make animation blueprint based on this skeleton mesh. And let's call it anything. Ball animation blueprint. Uh, sorry, PP, not PP. But anyways. So let's open this animation blueprint and let's jump directly into the graph. And because those morph targets driven by value, so let's add a variable to control this value or a variable to store this value. So let's call this uh, morph one value, and this should be float. And let's save. So. Let's here add the morph target, set morph target node, and within this node I need to pass two things. A value for the name and a value for the morph target itself. So if I open here I have name P sphere 2 and P sphere 3, and this is basically the names for my morph targets. So let's go again to the animation blueprint. Let's close these things. Yeah, come here to the animation blueprint and let's give the name of the morph target we want to test. So P sphere. Two. And for the value, I want the value to be driven by this float we already made, morph one value float. So let's copy this because we'll need it in a second and let's save and compile. And in order to test this, we can change directly the value here and you see the animation being applied. But this is far away from what we want to do. We were just testing. We need to control this value by matinee. And because we want need it by matinee let's put an instance here let's scale it this is for the animation blueprint so it's obvious let's play nothing fancy happens no more targets applied so let's add a matinee here and let's select our ball and come here and add a new group let's call it a uh, pool group grp and let's add the selected actor which is basically the animation blueprint here for this poll. And here let's add a new float animation blueprint parameter track. This allows us to control a parameter from within animation blueprint. It expands the time to 5 seconds or such. And let's paste the name here, the name that we took for the value, morph1 value, the name of the float, and let's paste it here. This is basically means this is a value we need to change. And from the animation blueprint class, let's choose the animation blueprint of the poll, which polled anim pp, and same thing here for the animation class.
So basically now we have something technically should be working, but let's add some keys because the value now will still zero all the time. So whenever I want to add a key, I press enter as you know, and let's I insert three keys here and let's come to the middle and let's set the time exactly to the middle of the five seconds and let's set the value to one. So it's zero, plane to one and come to zero again. Let's save, hit play, close Matinee, okay. So nothing happens, yeah, because we didn't actually run the Matinee. So let's open the level blueprint here and let's take a reference to our Matinee from the scene and let's just play, not, yeah, and let's on begin play. So one, once the game start, we start playing the Matinee, which basically have a value of this morph target change it so as you can see the value changes from 0 to 1 and back to 0 again and stop let's let's loop this thing so let's select the matinee and come here to the details panel and yeah looping so we can loop it now so it, it will start 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 and then it will start again 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 and so on and so forth so you can apply this for anything any morph target morph targets could be something to support your level design something for facial animations for character tons of things could be made with morph targets let's add another uh, value float value let's call it morph 2 value actually and let's control let's make it more fun and control the second uh, blend shape or second morph target as well so let's duplicate this one and just let's change to p sphere 3 which is basically the second morph target and let's control it with this value and let's go to matinee so yeah, this is the P sphere 3 and this is P sphere 2, but we can't control now because it's basically connected within the graph. But anyways, let's go again to Matinee. Where it is? Yeah, Matinee. Let's open Matinee and let's just duplicate this. Uh, let's not add one. Yeah, I believe there is duplicate. Let's copy this one and let's paste it here. Paste. Yeah, and just let's change the parameter name rather than morph one value to morph two value and yeah that's it so now we are controlling the two morph targets and playing them from zero to one to zero and replay yeah so that's it you can use it for lots of things and this will make you know animations usually make games pumps with life and using something like this will definitely make your games looks a lot better i hope it helps See you. Bye.